Welcome to Kalusugan Ay Karapatan. The One Health concept is a worldwide strategy for expanding interdisciplinary collaborations and communications in all aspects of healthcare for humans, animals, and the environment. The synergism achieved will advance healthcare for the 21st century and beyond by accelerating biomedical research discoveries, enhancing public health efficacy, expeditiously expanding the scientific knowledge base, and improving medical education and clinical care. When properly implemented, it will help protect and save untold millions of lives in our present and future generations. One Health recognizes the health of humans, animals, and the environment is interconnected. Holistic, coordinated, cross-sectoral approaches are required for understanding, protecting, and improving human, animal, and environmental health. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Kalusugan Ay Karapatan. Have you heard about One Health? What does it mean to the ordinary Filipino? I am Dr. Menchit Padilla and your host today, and my partner is Attorney Abdel. Thank you, Dr. Menchit. Before we start, may I greet all of you a good day. I hope you will like our episode today, a topic which is not known to many, but hopefully at the end of the day we'll be able to be fully ascertained about what it is. Through our invited guests, we will take a closer look at the One Health and the programs related to it to address problems at the interface of human, animal, and environmental health. That is true, Dr. Dr. Attorney Abdel. <laughs> Globalization, natural calamities, and man-made disasters force us to explore further programs on how we can work together and use the One Health strategy, which is also a means to achieve our targets faster for the health related to Millennium Development Goals while developing a culture of public health security. So without further ado, let us introduce our guests. To my right here, we have Dr. Michael T. He is an internist with subspecialization in rheumatology. He is also the Vice Chancellor for Planning and Development of UP Manila and can surely provide us insights on One Health. Welcome, sir. We're also happy to have Dr. Loindra Baldrias, a professor from UP Los Baños with specialization in veterinary public health and food safety. She is also the former dean of the College of UP, UP College of Veterinary Medicine. Welcome. Okay, so let's start the ball rolling by asking the question. Any one of our guests can begin. What is One Health all about? Ito yung napakahalagang tanong. Uh, One Health is about interdisciplinary uh, collaboration, working together of various disciplines, um, starting with human, animal, and those concerned with environmental science. It also includes other disciplines which may not be health-related, like engineers can be part of this uh, health, One Health concept. So parang yung One Health, it's really everybody involved yes. in health. Uh, mm -mm. That, that is the concept. Mm -mm. Anything pwede else? Abogado dyan, ma pwede, no. pwede. Kasi we really need good laws that would really promote helping together. Oh, Doc, you were saying? Yeah, it's about finding intersection in how the disease or the health of one area or one aspect of our environment, let's say the animals, can affect the humans. How the environments... Uh, changes in the environment, climate change, resiliency will affect food production and therefore will also affect our animals and down the line humans. How what you see as clues in the environment like the increasing uh, algae, harmful algae bloom for instance or the density of mosquito in one area as a result of changing temperature, humidity, rainfall can also affect human health. And what's important about human health is that it provides a clue. It provides you with, with actionable information. Now, as to how we can do that will depend on how these people will interact. And right now, there's uh, minimal, if not absent, interactions. Because veterinarians work with animals, human uh, doctors work with humans, Agriculturists will work with their plants, but they do not talk to each other. So what you're saying is that in health, you need all sectors helping so that we can improve the health 
of the human being, of the person. Yes. That's why you mentioned the vet med, and then you mentioned agriculture as part of the whole team. So is that something new in the Philippines? I mean, are we, is this the concept of One Health, is it something new in the Philippine setting? Uh, I believe it's not new. What we started with long before wala pa tayo, is the Bayanihan spirit, wherein we have the community working together to be able to address problems that affects the community, tulad ng paglilipat ng bahay. Oh. So they work together to be able to achieve that goal. In the same way, when we work on this One Health, we can be able to address problems that has long been there. Sabi nga mga intractable problems, mga wicked problems, wherein... If only one sector works uh, towards it, hindi must solve. So we have to work together to be able to address it. Like for example, um, we have a goal to be rabies-free Philippines by 2020. But to achieve that, it cannot be the work, sole work of veterinarians. We have the Department of Health coming together, coming uh, alongside the Department of Agriculture. We have the local government units to work together to be able to facilitate and support the program so that we can be able to achieve this rabies-free Philippines. Now, it's a long dream for me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. wh what we're saying now is that the practice, the impact of One Health, has been felt long before. It's just that there is no label. We're not calling it One Health, and therefore people are not consciously or consensually working towards the goal of getting the data from one sector and transmitting it to the other sector who may be able to use it better. Right now, the doctor will know what he knows. The vets will know what they know. But the interaction is something that we are all blind to. Pero matagal na pala siya, no? I mean, you know, the effect, yes. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's just a new name. Ito, a new, yeah, a new label. So, ang question ko po, sir, um, kung matagal na po siya, what is the status of the implementation of One Health in the Philippines? In the Department of Health, there is a One Health program. There is a, an office now trying to put these things together. But as to the framework against which it will be measured, it is uh, an ongoing process. We can say that it's uh, something that our group, our PICARI group, is trying to contribute to. We have a Department of Health, so can you just elaborate on that? Because I'm not aware that this is, is this a new office or a new program that's been implemented by the Department of Health? And um, kailan po ba? Did it start? Uh, I believe, um, siguro just a few years back, Nagsimula na itong One Health. And among the things that uh, we would like to address together is antimicrobial resistance. The other one is rabies, which is a uh, concerned uh, zoonotic disease natin sa Pilipinas. So, but was it called One Health at the time? Yes. A few years ago? Okay. So, that's nice One to Health. hear uh -huh. that... Um, this has been, uh, it's been conceptualized already at the mm -hmm. level of the Department of Health. And also the Department of Agriculture. And Department of Agriculture. Uh -huh. And specifically, you wanted to address rabies and antimicrobial, antimicrobial resistance. resistance. Uh -huh. Those are the two main projects. Yes, I know there's another one, but I can't remember it right now. Okay, so, so can we can talk about those two things? Because it's ongoing in the Philippines. So uh -huh. can you talk about rabies first? Okay, Ra in line with rabies, we have... Um, the funds of the Department of Agriculture is very limited because there are so many diseases that, that affects our animals and we have so many animals to deal with our livestock animals. So ang, ating, ang focus usually when it comes to the Department of Agriculture is livestock animals. So hindi masyadong tinututukan ang mga dogs which are of course considered to be pe uh, pets natin. No? Uh, so, but we have of course a lot of stray animals. So ang nangyayari ay the Department of Health uh, shared some money with the Department of Agriculture to buy vaccines. Because we've been doing vaccination sa Department of Bureau of Animal Industry. Kaya lang, very limited because we have very limited funds and we were encouraging the local government units to help. Kaya lang, limited din yung kanilang funds. But when the Department of Agriculture shared this fund, um, Department of Health shared these funds, ito na ngayon nakabili din tayo ng maraming vaccines. And we're hoping we can continue working on that so that we can be able to address a 70% level of protection 
to be able to protect the community against uh, meron man tayong attack of a rabid animal. Mm -hmm. So, ang, ang vaccination pala is really part, it's really part of the concept of One Health. From Secretary Will, we had a meeting with Secretary Will, and she was quite uh, informative in the, in the battle against rabies. She was saying, we've been vaccinating after dog bite. The, af dog bite after dog bite, the increasing number of vaccinations post-exposure is so high. Now, what we should do is, not because we are Department of Health, we will focus on vaccinating post-bite. We are now shifting focus on the animals. As she even mentioned some administrative hurdles that they had to overcome, because vaccinating dogs is not uh, vaccinating humans, and therefore, the mandate of Department of Health is, is somehow not aligned with it. But with the One Health concept, she found a good alignment. She's now able to hurdle the administrative barrier of spending for vaccinating dogs. Because imagine, your Department of Health, your patients are humans, and yet you are vaccinating dogs. This One Health concept helped her uh, hurdle that. Uh, Doc, baka lang kasi ma-confuse yung mga nanonood, no? baka kala nila vaccination lang ang, ano, ang One Health, vaccination of dogs. Um, baka pwede, ano pa ba ang mga other areas kung rabies po ang pinag-uusapan since we're on that topic? Ano po ba ang ginagawa pa or ina-address ng One Health aside from vaccination? Kasi ang nakita ko po, prevention, akala ko prevention, pero yung pala, um, really involving the animal element in the environment. Okay. Basically, yan mula ang sisimula natin, but I believe we can be able to involve other areas na nag-cause ng problem. Like for example, nakikita natin na halimbawa for, uh, we had several floods, no? Uh, Undoy, Habagat, and it was found na ang increase ng ating number of cases was correlated to the increase in rainfall. So, increase in leptospirosis pala. Uh, increased number of cases of leptospirosis. So, pwede natin i-address yun kasi for leptospirosis is ang pinaka number one source are rats, mice, na which could be sick of leptospira. And also dogs can be sick of leptospira. So if we can control the disease in animals, then we can hopefully address maging preventive tayo in controlling the disease from being transferred to humans. So parang ganun din sa rabies. Kung makontrol natin yung rabies sa animals, then we can protect human health. Mm -hmm. Siguro para kay Dr. T, kay Dr. Mike Don, siguro you can tell, share with us, ano ba yung symptoms ng rabies in the human naman? And then, as in signs and symptoms and leptospirosis. Kasi dalawa na pinag-uusapan natin yung sakit ngayon, ha? na konektado, no? For leptospirosis, patients will have fever, decreased urine output, or T-colored urine. And in really bad cases, you'll find them jaundice, yellow eyes. They will not urinate at all, not just decrease urination, that's wild syndrome. No? And uh, talking about the rainfall, One Health is not, about, it's not just about preventing it in animals because how can you prevent the entry of leptospira in rats? They live underground. So what's important is that if you are able to harness the data from PAGASA, harness of the data from other government agencies, you'll know that there will be rain. And with rain, you need to prepare for what will happen. The people will uh, wade in flood waters. So now, you activate all available information system. Activate the media. Tell them to warn the people about, don't wade in flood water. Tell them to consult when they have fever. And more importantly, you deploy prophylactic antibiotics in areas where you have floods. This is not usually done before because you have no predictive power. But now you can predict, especially if our dream of providing this information to, to our resource mobilizers, the leaders in the local government unit, because we have devolved health system. So who deploys the, the municipal health officer? Who deploys the budget for purchase of our uh, tablets? 
to pro as prophylaxis for leptospirosis. If he has a dashboard saying that in barangay A, rainfall will be like this, barangay B, like this, and previously, these areas with crops had poor uh, yield because of previous rat attack, then you know that the, the rat population there will increase. Kinain nila yung ano eh, yung dapat kinain ng tao eh. So, dadami sila. Pag dumami sila, tapos nagbaha, sila na ngayon yung magkakalat ng leptospirosis. Maraming concepts ng pumasok, Ator ni Abdel, no? So, ang tanong ko lang ngayon, no, ay, so, meron tayong rats na infested, tapos bumaha, tapos may lumusong sa baha, tapos nagkaroon tayo ng pasyente. Yun ang ating connection talaga sa, from the infested rats to a, to a person being affected. So, ang, ang role naman ngayon ng environment ngayon to make sure na hindi sila infested with lept leptospirosis, yun naman ang ginagawa ng, ng inyong community, uh, Dr. Loins. Uh, in line with agriculture, so na-mention ni, ni Doc yung ating mga rats na increasing population, usually this would be related to harvest season. So, ito ngayon natin, makikita natin yung may, may mga relationships si mga bagay-bagay. So, if we can be able to see kung paano natin ma-address tong Ma ma control o yung for example the infestation nakikita natin uh, harvest season so ibig sabihin dapat meron tayong implement na biological pest control so ma control natin yung ating pest sa environment so in that way eh, ma minimize natin yung population ng rats ma minimize natin yung possible uh, entry transmission of leptospirosis sa tao but I would like to add na hindi lang rats ang pwedeng panggalingan leptospirosis. Kung ano yung symptoms na nakikita natin sa tao, yun din yung nakikita natin sa animals. Kaya napakagandang alert. Pag makita natin yung symptoms sa animal, ibig sabihin, ingat tayo kasi in a little while, pwede na magkaroon tayo ng sakit sa humans. So, alert level ang maganda dito. So, Dok, layunin din po ba ng uh, One Health na to? ang um, yung mga animals na to, yung sa alertness na yan, ay ipa-inform ipa yung mga tao. Or, or, and extremely, if I, take it, if I may take it further, layunin din po ba niya na i-eliminate itong, itong mga animals na nagdadala ng mga sakit? I think it's more on education. Napakahalaga yung joint education kasi may information na galing sa human medicine. Meron ding information na relevant coming from the veterinary side. And meron ding from agriculture, meron ding from the environment. So ito yung mga information na to, if we can put it down together to serve as a basis for uh, more holistic information, mas magkakaroon tayo ng preventive uh, aspect doon sa ating pag, uh, sa mga sakit. Pero uh, susundan ko yung tanong ni Attorney Abdel, kasi for the rabies, nagbavaccinate sila ng, ng dogs, pero paano yung mga rats? Uh, so far, ito based doon sa, supposedly lahat ng warm-blooded animals is susceptible to rabies. Pero ang nakita nila sa Pilipinas, 99.9% are due to dog bites, ang ating rabies cases sa humans. So, kung saan yung problema, doon natin i-address yung solution. So, oh, vaccination of dogs, at sama na rin natin yung cats. And then, yung sa rats, siguro, siguro next, ano yan, next level naman yan, pag na-achieve na natin yung unang priority natin. Pero, pero, pero paano nga, i I mean, you know, how can we prevent the in uh, the if the uh, the condition in the rats ano magiging lunas natin do kasi at least for rabies meron tayong solution what about for the rats so i guess dito na ngayon yung napakahalaga ng hygiene kasi alam natin if we provide food for the rats like for example garbage iyan eh, ang magiging source ng kanilang pagkain so dadami sila so if we have a clean environment malinis yung ating mga barangay then we can be able to decrease the population of these pests banggit niyo na po yun po yung rats tsaka yung dogs no pero nabasa ko recently yung meron naman daw nagkaroon ng rabies kunuhay kinagat ng bat up north so bat also is Yes, very good source for rabies in South American countries and in other 
may, may ibang mga bansa na kung saan ang source ng kanilang rabies ay bats. Uh, so, thankfully, wala tayong vampire bats sa Pilipinas. Uh, what we have are fruit bats. Uh, uh, at safe sila against rabies kasi wala pa tayong na-identify na sila ay nangangagat ng tao. Ang kinagat nila mga prutas. So, for Attorney Abdel, examples natin kasi is animal and uh, humans. Eh. We had a little discussion on environment. Pero meron pang examples na plants naman ang involved? Concerned din po ba yung plants pala dito? Uh, dito Mahilip tayo sa tanim kasi, Doc, eh. No? Oo. Uh, ang isang concern dito, Doc, yung aspect ng food security natin. Halimbawa, kung may sakit yung mga plants, eh, wala tayong pagkain, mababawasan yung ating source of food. Pero alam ko meron pong masishare pa dito si Doc tungkol sa plants. Pero, pero Doc, uh, sabi niyo po, ma'am, yung plants nagkakasakit? Yes, nagkakasakit ang mga plants. Ang madalas, pag pinesti yung ating mga plants, namamatay sila, so hindi na natin sila magkakain. Pero that can have a consequence. For example, wala nang pagkain ngayon yung mga ibang animals, tulad din na rin mga rats, upang maghahanap sila ng ibang source ng pagkain. So, isang aspect yun na pwede nating makita na may mga interrelatedness ang mga bagay-bagay. An example is the recent coco up that destroyed our plantation of coconuts. So, it resulted to low economic output, resulted to in increasing poverty, and with poverty, you'll have more illness among our young children. We don't know the longer impact of this, but it happened. What we should know now is what resulted or what contributed to this increased cocolisa population. What change in temperature, what change in humidity, what change in rainfall happened to trigger increase in cocolisa infestation. It wiped out uh, areas in San Pablo, in South uh, Philippines. Imagine the, the impact. Another thing is when you look at crops, and the crops are dying, it's because of pest, it can be because of uh, insects, uh, well, animal, yung pest, pest na animals, or insects, and the immediate reaction of farmers would be to prevent crop death through spray, use of pesticides, use of chemicals. What is the impact of that chemical spraying to our people? It can be systemic meaning it stays in your body for a long time. And another would, could be inhalational injury. The young children of these farmers can inhale the chemicals resulting to increased respiratory problem. It can result to weakening of the immune system. It may trigger autoimmune diseases because of deaths in their own cells. So we, these are things that at this time, really purely speculative because, again, the agriculturist is not talking to the human doctors. One concrete example of how the interaction of these three, uh, three players would be what happened in Monterey Bay. That's why they now have the harmful algae bloom. Well, they noted that in California, otters were dying. They traced... No, there's nothing there down, downstream. So they look at upstream. What is feeding the, the bay? What river is feeding the bay? And then they sample the waters upstream and found out that the toxin found in otters were a result of uh, increased algae. And the algae are the ones producing the toxin. A local example will be red tide. Saxotoxin. Right now, we are fortunate because they al we already know what's happening. So, this is a concrete example of how One Health, the Bureau of Animal, uh, BFAR, Bureau of Fish and Aquatic Resources, the Water Monitoring System, and uh, our Department of Health are working together to issue periodic information. Don't eat shellfish from Cavite. Don't eat shellfish from Samar or wherever, as, as long as they know the pattern. And one important environmental pattern here is the heat, the temperature of the water, 
how it promotes the growth of algae. And then, we are warned. Right now, you don't hear about paralytic shellfish poisoning as often as uh, maybe as late as five years ago. Five years ago, you'd hear about Laguna with uh, paralytic shellfish poisoning. Pamilya na, na hospital dahil kumain ng tahong. Pamilya na kumain ng, ng halaan na nagkaroon na ng pagsusuka, pagtatay, at hindi maigalaw yung, o namamanhid ang muka. Yan ang mga sintomas noon. But right now, you hear, don't buy. And in the market, it is enforced. You're asked, saan galing yan? Ah, pag galing yan dyan, hindi yan papayagan ng market master na mapa, mapabenta. We're looking at that kind of knowledge that will guide our policy makers. Yung pwede niyang sabihin, umula ng ganito, Oy, municipal health officer, do you have uh, doxycycline? Yes, sir. Ilan? 100. But I need 200. Eh, because he knows the, the deployment of all his uh, information and all of his uh, resources, he'll say, municipal health officer 2, wala kang magiging ganyan. Padala mo kay municipal health officer 1 lahat yan. O one, bigay mo yan sa lahat ng tao mo. And then you'll have no leptospirosis. That's the kind of powerful information we're trying to develop. Whew! Doc Menchie, eh, diba? Malalim, ano? Pero alam niyo ba kung bakit silang naimbita natin? Kasi si Doc Mike, rheumatologist yan, ano? Anong ginagawa niya sa One Health? Well, siguro kay Dr. Loins, kasi vet med siya, no? But actually, they're actually involved in a certain project, One Health, no? They have teamed up to come up with a project, One Health. Now, I actually want them to describe, ano ba itong One Health project nila? Because we, we are looking forward to the outcome of this project so that it can be implemented by government. Sino ba magde-describe, Loins? What we... What we would like to do with this project, eh, ma-concretize namin yung application ng One Health locally. So, meron na kami mga target areas. And what we will be doing is, we are looking at the diseases being monitored by the Department of Health, as well as the Department of Agriculture. And we're also looking at possible uh, sources of illnesses that pwede manggaling sa mga uh, pesticides sa Department of Agriculture. And if we look at all these things, then we can be able to gather data. No? And when we gather data, ito ngayon ay gagawa ng application. At ang uh, one UP tayo, di ba? College of Medicine, uh, College of uh, uh, UP Manila, we have, of course, UP Los Baños, and then UP Diliman will be developing the application together with our friends from UC Davis. So, gagawa ng app ngayon na ito ngayon, iti-train natin yung ating one health worker na ifi-field natin dun sa mga barangay so that they will be able to monitor kung ano yung mga sakit, ano ba may mga problema bang nangyayari sa barangay, and then ito ngayon ay ilalagay nila dun sa app. And then itong app ngayon, uh, yung information, ibabato ngayon doon sa itong central server so that the data can immediately be analyzed. So ngayon, ang ating mga, with that data, pwede natin ma-advise natin ang mga local government officials kung anong dapat natin gawin. Pwede agad natin ma-prevent kung ano yung source ng sakit. So we have a healthier community. So, so ano itong uh, minomonitor? Ano yung hahanapin ng ating One Health Worker, anong data ang kanilang kinokollect? Basically, ang data na yan would be kung ano yung nakaka-apekto sa tao, nakaka-apekto na sa animal, yung mga nakikita nilang mga sintomas na nandun sa tao, sa animals, at yun yung ilalagay nilang data. Ang, with this data, i-input din natin ngayon yung data galing sa ating pag-asa, our weather, ang ating mga rainfall, ilalagay natin lahat ng mga data na yan. So, magkakaroon tayo ng algorithm, makikita natin may pattern. Oh, mas marami nagkakaroon ng clustering ng cases dito sa lugar na ito. Ano kayang naan doon? So, mga ganong mga analysis, lang ilalabas na sagot yun. And then hopefully, that answer will lead to control of the disease. We have, we have an experience in dengue, ma'am. It's a self-learning machine. We have already created a self-learning machine and we're fortunate to have presented that in uh, Greece last year. The inputs included temperature, rainfall, humidity, 
all coming from uh, Pagasa. And then we look at the incidents from the Epidemiology Bureau. For the past 30 to 50 years, we inputted these things. And then looked at how it will predict dengue incidents when certain, uh, certain environmental factors happen when a certain density of the population is uh, predicted, because it's not just uh, what the weather, it's also about how close the people are together. Because if there are a lot of people, you have more incidents because the transmission is vector-borne. I bite you, I bite her, I bite him, the three of you will have dengue. So these are, this has been proven in dengue. Now we want to prove it in other diseases. There are 16 diseases for reportable for the, the Epidemiology Bureau. They have been kind enough, Dr. Irma Asuncion and Secretary Ovial have been very kind, providing us with three books. The PIDS manual, it's a manual that directs how you should respond. There are two ways of monitoring. One is event-based. If there is a diagnosis, you record that. The other is uh, the usual monitoring. And there are reportable cases that you report immediately upon diagnosis. There are others that you wait for one week. But the, the healthcare worker or the one health worker will be someone who is going to attend to the problem of the entity in front of him. That's all. I have a patient. I am concerned with the patient. If he's a, he's a, a human, I love the checklist from our review of systems. Then the review of systems will direct me to a differential diagnosis. But, but the application is not just in detection, but also in providing immediate information. I'll tell you, you have, if you have diarrhea or, and fever, then the One Health app will inform the One Health worker, the barangay health worker, and tell us I need to advise you about hydration. I need to advise you about fever lysis. And then I'll advise you to follow up with me, or it will alert me to follow up with you within the algorithmic capacity of that app. So, ang nakukuha ko dito ngayon ay, um, this One Health project is uh, developing a model such that our One Health worker now, who is not just for man and animal separately, but one health worker will be able to get data to guide for the next steps on a bigger and a wider scale on a policy level. Kailan po masok din dito ang mga lawyers natin? Modeling is only one step. If they're able to show that this system is going to work and this app is going to work and it's going to be a tool for the worker in the ground, we definitely need the policy now at the level of government. Nga po, parang um, very parang prevention ang ano nito at saka, of course yung holist, pagiging holistic how far are we in finishing po yung app po na yan uh, we are just starting with the app uh, so magsisimula pa lang the grant started uh, April 1 April 1 uh -huh. our initial project report was submitted April 1 and we were allowed given the notice to proceed April 1 Okay. By but, but when are you, do you expect to get the data? I think that's a more important one. In, ba in, two years, no? in two years. In two years time. Baka hindi kailangan din na umabot ng two years. Kailangan na natin ng panahon ngayon. Ano? Yes. But by the time it has been approved. Meaning in one year we would have developed the app. And then in one year, in another year we would have tested it for its utility. There's a different way of testing for developed applications. Yeah, okay. But let's not wait for the app. Right now, and dami na nating nakuhang uh, possible lessons, no? What we're saying now is that any health worker out in the field who finds a symptom in either animal or human should see, should look for the connection. Kasi dami nating examples na nakuha ngayon. So, for the diarrhea, for instance, the, the health worker will not just be concerned about you. The next question will be, do you have animals living around you? The answer is yes. Have you observed similar? Nagtatai rin ba ang mga baboy ninyo? O kaya namamatay din ba yung mga manok nyo? And then magsinahan niyang, yes. Oh, you observed namin yon. Tapos, sa ang tubig ninyo, saan nyo kinukuha? Sa balon eh. Saan ang balon nyo? Ah, okay. Wala bang mga amoy na hindi maganda? 
Wala naman ho. Okay, ni next. Punta ka sa kabila. Balon din ang ginagamit. Walang hayop. Pero yung tao, nagtatae. Now you find dalawang balon sa isang barangay na merong nagtatae. Hindi naman sila nagparty ng sabay. So pagdating mo sa pangatlo, meron naman nagsusuka. Same, balon din ang ginagamit. Now you start thinking, baka yung balon yung problema. And we have an expert, a water expert in the person of Dean Romeo Kison. So he has experience in looking at water cleanliness, water quality, heavy metal in water, hormones in water. So that will be incorporated and we're coordinating with, because it's Laguna, the Laguna Lake Development Authority. So nakukuha ko ngayon, Doc, uh, po, sa, po, sa, sa inyo, um, yan ang gustong pwedeng magawa during, uh, with the One Health. Balik lang po tayo, step back po, ah. concrete example. So currently po, uh, are you saying na hindi to ginagawa or walang conscious effort na hindi to Sige, hindi ganito ang lens ng ano, mga professional sa Kinagawa natin. Hindi nga lang ganun ka-conscious. Or maybe we really have to create a platform kung saan we can get together and talk about common problems. So go from coming from this different disciplines. On. And we can learn more. This is not new because if you, if you read the numbers, numbers of the Old Testament will tell you kung humawa ka ng patay na, uh, na, ano, na animal, hindi ka pwedeng sumama sa, sa mga tao. Ihiwalay ang mga may ketong sa walang ketong. Kailangan nyo maghugas. If you're unclean, you have to be separated. Even quarantine was already taught as... Sa Leviticus siya noon. Diba? So, curious lang po ako, um, bago tayo magtapos po, no? bakit po One Health ang pinili? Kayo po ba ang nag-coin? Or did we adapt this from some global... Idea. Okay, ang ang One Health daw when when we yung, unang simula talaga nito one medicine siya. So it's supposed to be human and animal medicine coming together. Pero later on nakita na there can be a bigger area na pwede nating ma-expand ito. So yung one would mean in transdisciplinary, no? So iba-ibang disciplines and then yung health is optimal health for humans and the ecosystem wherein animals is also part of that ecosystem. So yun yung parang na coin nila na one health. So hindi kayo nag-imbento. Hindi namin kaya yun. Na nawala lang kasi yung mga successful are the subspecialists and specialists. So when you're specializing when you're specializing you tend to focus on what you're really very good at and forget everything else. Parang ako, I'm a specialist in, in rheumatology. I know, I know that, but I'm now going back to the basic of health. Mukhang kailangan tayo mag-part to Atonia Abdel kasi kaka-start lang kanilang proyekto, no? But uh, I've learned a lot about One Health today, the relationship between uh, man, animal, environment. And, Doc uh, mentioned, hindi ko nga natanong na rin eh, kasi tinitingnan nila yung sa rainfall, yung changes in the environment, yes. kasi ang buzzword ngayon, yung climate change. Yes. So baka, Pang ano? Part two yan. Pang part two yan. Ako. Part two tayo yan. But maybe we can ask them to give a message, no? Uh, uh, Doc, before Doc Mati, before we wrap up our show. Yeah, the, the concept of One Health is something that can be developed and it has a potential to change the course of disease development. Not because you know more about the disease, but because you can now address even before the disease can uh, happen. Sabi nga, the best general is the one that fights, that wins without fighting. If you can prevent the disease, you don't need to fight in the arena of the human being. Fight it in public health. Okay. So, gusto namin i-promote ang One Health wherein we can be able to work together to better improve community health, the health of the environment, and we're hoping na hindi lang health ng barangay, but it would be the Philippine health and the global health. So, uh, One Health for synergism, collaboration, integrative uh, sh sharing of knowledge. And, and according to our partners in, the, in UC Davis, this is the first in the world. This is the first application development, the first predictive uh, capacity to be developed in the whole world. Oh, ang na naman ng Philippines. <laughs> well, wag tayo magpaiwan dyan. But, you know, it's, it's nice that we're proactive about it. And definitely, we need the part two 
uh, maybe after a year, meron na tayong konting resulta na pwede pag-usapan at marami pa tayong pag-usapan at that time yung app, dapat may example na tayo niyan. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope this episode has given you new knowledge and insights on what is One Health. Thanks to our guests today, Dr. T and Dr. Baldrias for gracing our program. Again, nababangit nga ni Dr. Menchit, no? we will be very glad to have you again in our future programs for follow-up. And then thank you to, um, thank you to everyone who joined, who joined us today. And as always, we hope to see you again in our next episodes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.